Good evening, Brockton residents and business owners. City Council President Farwell, School Committee Vice Chairman D'Agostino, Superintendent Mike Thomas, Superintendent Lewis Lopes, Brockton City Councilors, Brockton and Southeastern Regional School Committee members, legislators, and Massachusetts state officials. I am here tonight to tell you that despite of all the incredible challenges we in Brockton and across our nation have faced in the past year, the state of our city is strong. It's been just over a year since I took office as Brockton's mayor and no one could have predicted what we'd be facing today. But I am proud of our city and how we have responded to these crises and pulled together. The resilience, compassion, and perseverance so many have shown truly proves to me that Brockton is the city of champions. I would expect nothing less from the city where I was raised, educated, and now raising my own family. Last January, when I was sworn into office to lead the city that I love so much, I had high hopes and big plans for how Brockton might develop over the course of my term. Expanding economic development, centering diversity and inclusivity in city government, modernizing our city processes were my first term goals for Brockton. But just in a few months into 2020, I got a new top priority when the global pandemic known as COVID-19 arrived and hit our community hard. The city needed to reprioritize and pivot quickly to meet these unprecedented demands, strains, and challenges that came with the COVID-19 response. We needed to take immediate action to protect our citizens and support our healthcare system. We did just that. We've lost more than 360 residents to this terrible virus. Our hospitals, community health centers, and other community organizations, they rose to the occasion. Our frontline healthcare workers became heroes right before our very eyes. And again, I have never been prouder to be a Brocktonian. With the vaccine now being administered to our frontline workers, I can say truly there is light at the end of the tunnel that we've all been traveling through the past year. The Brockton Emergency Management Agency, led by the very capable Steve Hook, had done four drills over the past several years specifically to preparing for a vaccine distribution in the event of a global pandemic. They were plans that just a year ago no one ever thought we'd have to implement. But thanks to BEMA, Steve Hook, Fire Chief Michael Williams, Police Chief Manny Gomes, and the Brockton Board of Health with Director Eno Mondesur, we are not only prepared, but we have successfully vaccinated hundreds of frontline Brockton workers. I am hopeful that in the coming weeks and months, we will have more vaccines to vaccinate every Brockton resident. When COVID-19 hit, I was only a few weeks into my term, but we had a great team in place. On March 16, 2020, I declared a local state of emergency. It was an unprecedented situation that demanded a comprehensive response from the mayor's office. The city assembled a team of experts to guide our action plan. We engaged Dr. Richard Herman, to serve as our pandemic consultant for the city. Dr. Herman is the former chief of the emergency room at both Brockton hospitals. He has led our daily efforts as we work with our elected officials, pastors, and residents. Dr. Richt is collecting data. He developed a state-recognized daily dashboard that keeps our Brockton residents updated and case counts in our city. I also want to thank John McGarry, RN, and Dr. Linda Cahill, who both led the Board of Health until we brought on Eno Montessor as the Executive Director of the Board of Health. Eno has worked hard every day to ensure Brockton's health protocols are robust enough to cope with the COVID-19 virus. In collaboration with our friends at the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center, Signature Healthcare Brockton Hospital, we quickly outfitted an outdoor facility at Brockton High School to test our citizens. Open communication during uncertain times was one of my top priorities. Starting last spring and continuing to this very day, I hold regular virtual meetings with local business leaders, hospitals, nursing homes, clergy pastors, and our financial institution. I formed both a regional and countywide task force with other municipal executives to share our resources and best practices with our neighboring towns and communities so that we can fight the pandemic together. I held town halls for our city and school employees and faith community leaders to answer questions and hear feedback. I held multilingual town halls in Haitian and Cape Verdean 
We needed to work together to coordinate effective response. We did just that, working across departments, language, faiths, and town lines. Even in the midst of an unprecedented pandemic, the demands of everyday life persisted. To make life easier for Brocktonians, I extended filing deadlines for city property tax bills. I instituted a Dropbox system for residents to pay necessary fees outside at City Hall. We discounted nearly $90,000 in license fees to our restaurants and bars to help support their survival during this very difficult time. We launched the Brockton Together Fund, which provided fiscal support for our hometown businesses during lockdown and provided both business assistance and rental assistance through our federal CDBG monies. It's been a long road, but there's hope. Brockton to date has vaccinated 600 frontline workers in phase one of the Commonwealth's vaccination plan. In the near future, all Brocktonians will be able to be vaccinated. I strongly encourage every resident to receive their vaccine once eligible. We must all do our part to keep each other safe. I plan to get mine as soon as possible, knowing that I'm also working with the Baker Polito administration to secure a regional vaccine site here in the city of Brockton. Please stay alert for updates by following my office on social media or visiting our website, which is brockton.ma.us. <clears throat> we have secured more than $18 million in Federal CARES Act funding since the pandemic began. This federal aid has been used to purchase laptops for every Brockton public school student. And PPE, the personal protective equipment for our first responders, has help, also helped us fund testing and provide other essential services. And we couldn't have done that without our friends and partners in Plymouth County. I want to thank the county commissioners and county treasurer. There is no doubt that Brockton businesses took a, a hit this past year. And we've worked to secure assistance to help those small businesses. They're the lifeblood of our community. Along with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, we've sponsored the, the small business assistance webinars on Fridays. We've connected our community businesses with our state, federal, and private sector resources and leaders to support them during the downturn that we've seen this year. We've made funding available to help the small businesses and I legalized outdoor dining to help our local restaurants, assisted business owners with negotiating the red tape of applying for both state and federal aid. We're in this together, we need to work in collaboration. We've also seen firsthand over the past year the tragic results of inequalities in our healthcare system and how the vulnerable populations are truly disproportionate. They're impacted <clears throat> during this crisis. The city of Brockton is beautiful and it's diverse and we had to ensure that health information was equally accessible to non-English speakers and we did just that. I added to my budget two new public health nurses for the Board of Health and They've been able to work and help manage the crisis, ensure that the health of our city is safe. One of these positions is focused on assessing disparities in health outcomes across Brockton's demographic groups. It is vital that all Brocktonians have the same opportunity to seek and maintain appropriate medical care. We began the Health Equity Task Force and we partnered with local Haitian and Cape Verdean media outlets and organizations to, to get the vital information out on COVID-19 protocols and safety procedures. One of my major goals moving forward is to increase the city's translation capacity and formalize our translation processes. Remember, about 30% of our city's population is foreign born. It's time that our city's communication plan mirrors the language needs of all our citizens. In order to inform and educate, we utilized the digital billboards on Route 24 and we did a, a mailing of 36,000 households uh, and it was in multiple languages, Spanish, English, Haitian, and in Cape Verde and Creole to explain protocols and procedures. We all know it's been a tough year and despite the challenges, the city has seen significant progress. We've truly made great strides in the ongoing effort to revitalize Brockton's downtown and have successfully brought in new both public and private sector investment in the city of Brockton. The landscape of the city is changing. Once it was the shoe manufacturing industry of the world, Downtown has not been utilized to the full potential for many, many years, and it's high time that we change that. Our city will undertake several new marketing initiatives to highlight development opportunities in Brockton's historic downtown. My office will develop a map of the development opportunities in the city to showcase what we have to offer and synchronize the city's needs with developers. Brockton has truly much to offer. Developers and business community, they're responding to that. Other cities the size of Brockton, such as Lowell, Salem, and Quincy have 
reinvented themselves through creative marketing, smart planning, and strategic partnerships. And we are doing the same here in Brockton. With the help of several state grants, a robust marketing plan, and the benefit of three public transit stations here in Brockton's downtown, along with Montello and Campello districts, we are primed to host new housing business, new retail opportunities, and help existing businesses expand and thrive. Downtown, as well as, again, Campello and Montello neighborhoods are transforming rapidly. Right now, there's 500 new units of transit-oriented housing and proposed development. The dream of rebuilding is truly becoming a reality. As mayor, I speak regularly with real estate developers, local and throughout the state and beyond. They all express a strong desire in rehabbing, rebuilding, constructing, and investing in our city. I'm happy to say that the city was recently awarded a $250,000 grant from the Commonwealth to clean up the historic Corcoran building on Montello Street. These funds will clear the way for this vacant building to be transformed into a new mixed unit development near public transit. The city also received $2.6 million from MassWorks. It's an infrastructure grant to fund road, utility, and infrastructure improvements in our Campello neighborhood. These funds will help build the Campello Place, a new proposed 94-unit mixed-use community that will include both retail and commercial space. Commuters who work both in Boston and Providence are, are being attracted to Brockton because of the affordable new market rate housing and the commuter rail access, but they also find a variety of world-class amenities here. Renowned, renowned art museums, historical sites, great family restaurants, a growing international culinary scene, beautiful parks and green space, and three golf courses. In fact, Brockton's flagship golf course, DW Field, has been the recipient of numerous awards. This year, over 30,000 players participated in golf at DW, and because of the challenge and the convenience and the affordable price, believe it or not, revenues at the course increased almost 220% from 656,000 in 2015 to over 1.4 million in the year 2020. Recently, Brockton has also become a Hollywood filming destination. Networks like AMC and Netflix, they've chosen Brockton as an ideal location to film TV shows and major motion pictures. The state's generous film tax breaks have attracted more production in the Commonwealth of Mass, and Brockton stands to benefit from these new jobs and business opportunities. Our historic downtown and our dynamic neighborhoods can truly serve as a, a perfect setting for nearly any story. And I'm excited to see more productions here in 2021 and well beyond. The year 2020 was truly unlike any other. If there's one thing I learned over the course of this year is the power of collaboration, conversation, and the willingness to work to get together creates success. Last summer, protests over the brutal murder of Mr. George Floyd at the hands of law enforcement struck Brockton to its core and demanded swift action. To meet the times as mayor, I, I took the Obama Foundation, my brother's keeper's pledge. Toward that pledge, I created a community justice task force. It includes eight dedicated, engaged residents from Brockton. They're assessing our needs with regards to housing, health, economic development, education, and police reform. They're not only interviewing city employees and experts and residents, they're also hosting a series of public meetings to give residents a chance to voice their own concerns. I look forward to receiving the report from the task force in April to develop a fuller understanding of what Brockton needs, and I'll take appropriate steps to ensure the city is a welcoming and safe place for all. The protests in Brockton were not just about a single incident, but included a long-standing process and culture revealed by the Lopes lawsuit. I am proud of the work that my administration has done to comply with the requirements of that lawsuit settlement. We will continue to invest in our workforce knowing that the city is only as good as the people who work for it. To ensure City Hall remains an inclusive and welcoming workplace, we are reevaluating re our human resources and hiring practices. A key aspect is to hire and bring on a diversity and inclusion specialist who will guide the formation of new policies and procedures. Another crisis uh, continuing to impact our city is the opioid epidemic. Our city has not forgotten those affected by addiction and mental health disorders while we are taking on the battle of the pandemic. 
the city's acclaimed champion plan remained operational, making referrals to detox programs and arranging medication, assisting treatment and other outpatient services. Champion plan hit two milestones in the year 2020, reaching 1,500 intakes and over 10,000 follow-up calls to ensure those in recovery stay in recovery. Building on the principles of the Champion Plan, I'm thrilled to announce that Brockton has partnered with Bridgewater State University and Boston Medical Center, thanks to a $1.8 million state grant to expand services and help our city improve upon treating those suffering from substance use disorders. I'm establishing task forces to expand services for other populations. Over the holidays, I directed my office to collaborate with the city's nonprofit organizations together to host outreach events to ensure that all Brocktonians could access hot meals and be provided necessary clothing and gear such as winter coats and boots. Together, we are innovating new ways to support those in the most need. I've also convened a, a homeless task force in the city. It's comprised of staff and faith leaders and human service organizations. I'm looking forward again to receiving the task force report and, working hard to create goals to reduce homelessness in our city. As a dad of three, I realize that the youth need our support, admiration, and guidance. The emotional impact created by COVID is real. That is why I'm happy and was happy to reinstate the Mayor's Youth Council. Listening and learning from the youth in our city is key to our success. They're the next generation. That is why tonight I am pleased to announce the creation of a Mayor's Youth Task Force to foster communication, collaboration with the youth of Brockton. Despite the struggles of the last year, I'm confident that Brockton is poised to emerge stronger than ever before. Our city achieved a 60.4 response rate for the 2020 census. That data directly determines the amount of aid, federal support Brockton is eligible to receive. I want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you who responded to the census. You've helped pave the way for our very, very bright future. Though we're living in an era of social distancing, the city of Brockton, now more than ever, wants to see our citizens engaged in the civic process. We've extended open invitations to residents to join the city's many boards and commissions. If you're interested to learn more about it, please contact my office. We'd love to hear from you. To further increase engagement here in Brockton, we will continue to push for early voting. It is vital that voting, a central principle of our democracy, is equally accessible to all. Brockton Public Schools serves over 16,000 students, and it's a success story. I'm a product. I've been recognized by the state for its remote learning programs, and thanks to the dedicated, satisfied, sacrifice and commitment of the BPS staff. I want to say thank you to Superintendent Mike Thomas, School Committee, Vice Chairman Mark D'Agostino for their courageous leadership. Our BPS food service workers have to be thanked. They've ensured that during uh, closure and transition to remote learning, BPS families never missed an opportunity to pick up meals, 17 locations throughout the city of Brockton. I also want to thank the custodial staff that ensures that the classrooms and schools are clean and disinfected. Thank you all. Our tenacious administrators have truly guided several transitions for our students and remained steadfast through all these obstacles. They've helped BPS families obtain access to the PEBT benefits, further ensuring that no child in our city will go hungry. I'm proud to announce that thanks to a state food security infrastructure grant, Brockton High School will soon house an outdoor and indoor farm to be cultivated and managed by our students. This uh, system will provide fresh produce to many BPS families, teach business skills to our youth, reduce food insecurity, and improve sustainability. This is awesome. Last but certainly not least to our Brockton teachers and classroom staff, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Your tireless efforts and commitment to our students is an inspiration to all of us. Without you, our students could not continue learning amidst this crisis. You have shown perseverance, commitment, professionalism and grit to our students and families. The city of Brockton can never thank you enough. As the dawn breaks on the year 2021, our city will continue to innovate and modernize. Integral to growth is change from within, especially in the era of social distancing. It's important city processes like permitting and licensing and fee paying become automated and online. 
The city, the city received a $1,360,000 state grant to modernize a permitting system. Contractors and homeowners will soon be able to apply online for building permits. The system, when it's enacted, will streamline home improvements and make the process for new construction less complicated. Moving these transactions online will increase convenience for citizens and really reduce administrative costs. It's a win-win. It truly is. Ensuring that residents are able to play a leading role in keeping our city clean and safe. My administration recently had the Kennedy Harvard School review and review our C-ClickFix platform and makes a series of recommendations how to make it work better for our residents, our city departments. It's vital that all Brocktonians have uh, their concerns recorded and addressed as quickly as possible and I want to thank uh, the Kennedy School for their efforts. This past spring we convened an IT task force to assess our information technology needs here in the city. We are in the process of implementing all of those recommended changes, including a, a full overhaul of the payroll system. We're improving City Hall's security infrastructure, adding security offices and a police office annex downstairs at City Hall. Safety is paramount. Along with these efforts to improve existing systems, my office has started to send out a newsletter to keep Brocktonians updated on exciting things happening in our city. Visit brockton.ma.us slash newsletter to sign up. We'd love to hear from you. The world around us is changing rapidly. It's time for Brockton to take a step back and consider the strengths as well as areas for improvement. This year, my administration is conducting thorough external audits of city departments to identify areas of strength as well as areas for improvement. These audit results will be made public and will be done in time to help inform me and the CFO for the upcoming budget. We plan to reorganize City Hall offices as well so the departments are able to fulfill their duties and residents have a much easier time navigating this building. This will save the city money also by ending leases for external office space. Excellent customer service is my goal. Every Brocktonian should leave City Hall or the website confident that every question they had has been answered and the needs have been adequately met. I am pleased to report that Brockton is strong and stable. The financial condition with an S&P long-term bond rating of AA to ensure fiscal stability is the long-term goal. And we're introducing our first capital budget for larger expenses and investments this year. We're going to continue to utilize grant funding, including the millions of dollars that both the city and school department received over the last year. I am also pleased to announce that the city council has authorized the bonding for Brockton's new public safety building. I want to thank them for their support in this matter. This much needed state of the art facility will house our fire, our police, IT and BEMA departments, increasing collaboration and efficiency in our emergency responses. I truly look forward to public input as we continue to plan and implement our community's vision for this long needed modern building. The well-being and safety of Brockton residents is my top priority. While the COVID-19 pandemic has challenged our city like never before, we have also never seen our city exhibit more innovation, resilience, and determination. I'd like to take a moment to recognize our hometown heroes, our firefighters, our police officers, our first responders, our healthcare workers, without whom COVID-19 response would have failed. The sacrifices that they have each made are immeasurable. The mental and physical burdens that they have assumed throughout this crisis cannot be overstated. To all frontline workers, I can only express my deepest gratitude. Many Brocktonians owe their lives to you. If you ever need help, please do not hesitate to contact my office. And again, thank you for your service. I want to hear from each and every one of you. Be on the lookout for virtual community town halls uh, starting this spring, similar to the ones that I held in January of last year at Brockton High School in the Lodge Auditorium. I'll be available to hear your concerns and answer your questions and that's what it's about to be a public servant. I want to hear from you and work with you. As we rebuild our city, we must remember that many Brocktonians are struggling. This might mean that they're not paying rent or putting food on the table. My goal is to expand rental assistance protections, to keep residents in their homes and keep business operational, to truly help out is what it means to be a public servant. You can contact my office at any time and we'll connect you with resources to prevent eviction. For many of you, your mental health also has declined because of isolation and stress of the pandemic. 
So Brocktonians, I want you to know that the city is here for you in any way that you need. Past year was hard, it truly was. We must remain vigilant though in the face of the greatest public health crisis our city, state, country, and world has experienced in 100 years. Please continue to wear your masks, wash your hands, maintain social distance from those that you don't immediately live with. I know I'm asking a lot to sacrifice, but vaccinations are on the horizon and we cannot let our guard down at this time. I was born here in the city of champions. And I see that the fighting spirit is, is what makes Brockton Brockton every day. In remembrance of those we have lost, I encourage each and every one of you tonight to observe a, a silent moment. I'll be doing that with my family. We must recognize their loss while looking forward. As I leave you tonight, I'd like to repeat that the state of our city is strong. Brockton residents continue to fight. We are the city of champions. We will overcome these challenging times and we will persevere together. Thank you. Have a good evening.